Ladies and gentlemen, there are things that I love and things that I hate. But one thing I absolutely love are movies, especially 80s movies. As far as being a movie expert is concerned, I think I qualify. And here's the reason why. I'm Davy J, and welcome to Davy J Today. Let's get on with the show. Davy, 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 You might be wondering, what specifically about movies are we going to be discussing today? Well, Rolling Stone magazine, that's right, the music magazine, did a top 100 readers poll of the top 100 best movies of the 1980s. Now, let's be honest, the 1980s was an amazing decade. The most important thing to happen in the 80s was, of course, the birth of myself in 1987, born in 1987. That's the year of my birthday. However, the decade of the 1980s, amazing. So many amazing horror movies, great dramas, long-lasting comedies, and of course, epic adventures like The Goonies. Who could forget The Shining? But I don't want to get ahead of myself. We're going to go ahead and look at the Rolling Stone magazine top 100 movies of the 80s, but more specifically, the top 25, because I just don't have time. I know you don't have time to talk about 100 movies. And we're going to talk about the top 25 and... We're not just going to summarize them, but we're going to see what I think about them, if I'm seeing them at all, and if I own them. Some of them you might be surprised. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is the website for Rolling Stone magazine, and this is the online article. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at what the top 25 are. If you really want to know what the top 100 movies of the 80s that they have here, the full listing, I will leave the link in the description below. Okay, let's get started. The first one here is number 25, RoboCop. Uh, RoboCop is an instant classic. Of course, I have it. Paul Verhoeven is also famous for Total Recall, which is a 90s movie. But also, I don't know. They have this similar style, and he just does a great job at putting his own taste into his famous film. So when you look at a movie like Total Recall, and especially RoboCop, you can be like, oh, these are made by the same person. You can totally tell that because they have the similar aesthetic. And I just love RoboCop. And some of these, again, I haven't seen. So, but we'll go through everything here. And you might be surprised at what I haven't seen. Paris, Texas. I don't know. I get this is done by the readers. This poll was made by uh, the Rolling Stone Music Magazine readers. So most of these people are really into music. Not to say that they don't know about movies or anything like that. And I'm not trying to belittle anything or take anything away from it, but uh, number 24, Paris, Texas. I think a lot of people would disagree with that. Now, have I seen it? No, but top 25 of the 80s? <sighs> and then you see other stuff here, like here's some stuff that are just out of reach. The King of Comedy, I haven't seen that. But look, number 27, E.T. You think that would be like top 10? Number 28, The Terminator. I mean, come on. I think that would be at least top 15, right? Okay. Let's keep it going. Paris, Texas is number 24. Number 23, The Right Stuff. Never seen it. Let's move on. Uh, number 22, An American Werewolf in London. I have the Betamax, of course. And American Werewolf in London is probably my favorite werewolf movie behind Silver Bullet. I'm a huge Corey Haim fan, so I gotta love Silver Bullet. David Naughton, Griffin Dune, fantastic in this movie. John Landis was the director of this movie. And John Landis is another guy that just knows what he wants as a filmmaker. Trading Places, An American Werewolf in London, Beverly Hills Cop 3, just to name a few. He knows what he wants. John Landis is awesome. And this is also, by the way, the reason he was asked to produce Thriller by Michael Jackson, a fantastic zombie music video. If you haven't seen the Thriller music video by Michael Jackson, you gotta go check that out. An American Werewolf in London, number 22 on the list. 
Let's keep it going, shall we? Number 21, Stop Making Sense. Never seen it. Number 20, Blowout. Haven't seen it. <laughs> Don't make fun of me, guys. I haven't seen it. Number 19, Something Wild. Probably a great movie. Jeff Daniels. Never seen it. I mean, like I said, a lot of these I own. A lot of them I have seen. But I think you'd be surprised to know that I just haven't seen a lot of these. And again, number 19 on the list. Something Wild. Number 18, Say Anything. This is what put John Cusack into the pop culture and solidified his career. Everybody remembers that famous scene where he's holding up the stereo outside the house. Number 17, Raising Arizona. I've seen it once, haven't seen it for many years. It's a great film. That's all I can say, I don't really remember. Oh, Joel and Ethan Cohen. <laughs> the Cohen brothers, of course. The people who did Fargo. Number 16 is a little movie called The Shining. Jeez, I swear I own this movie on every format. HD DVD, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K Blu-ray. I mean, I have everything. And of course, I do have the Laserdisc. And if you want to watch The Shining, the best way to watch it is in 4.3. Because believe it or not, when Stanley Kubrick made The Shining, he was filming it for television audiences. So yes, it was going to be in the theater, but you really do watch it wrong when you're watching it widescreen. I think this movie was meant to be watched in full screen. So if you can watch this movie in 4.3, what else can be said about this movie? I mean, Jack Nicholson, here's Johnny. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's so many quotes in this movie. The most quotable movie ever. It is scary. It is dramatic. It is frightening. Oh yeah, Shelley Duvall's portrayal as Wendy Torrance, and I think a lot of people who love movies know the backstory. Stanley Kubrick was very hard on Shelley Duvall during the making of this film, so much so that she had a little PTSD for a couple years after, and it shows. In these scenes where she's essentially running away from Jack Nicholson's character, Jack Torrance, she looks absolutely terrified, and that is by design, believe me. Stanley Kubrick made that happen on screen. So you can thank him for that. But you can also thank Shelley Duvall. What an amazing actress. The Shining, number 16. Let's keep it going, shall we? Okay, Die Hard, number 15. Bruce Willis. And it seems like nowadays, does Bruce Willis ever say no to any movies anymore? I mean, it seems like he's playing a bit role, like a small role in all these little movies that really don't matter, these small budget movies. This is the new Bruce Willis movie. Which, Which one? one? Apex? American Siege? Out of Death? Hard Kill? Cosmic Sin? Midnight in the Switchgrass? Survive the Night? Survive the Game? Deadlock? Breach? Fortress? Which one? Which movie is it? Ugh, oh, look guys, this whole conversation has made me tired but they put him on the cover even though it's like a super low budget movie and he has like a scene that lasts like 22 seconds. It's like a 22 second cameo, but they still put him on the movie cover just because they think it'll sell more. Uh, but yeah, Die Hard. I, I forgot this was an 80s movie. Yep, yeah, 1988 Die Hard. A lot of people's favorite Christmas movie. And of course, I do have this movie on Laserdisc. Beautiful copy. If you're gonna watch it, you gotta watch it on widescreen Laserdisc. Check it out. Let's keep it going. Number 14 is Brazil, and of course, this is Terry Gilliam. And Terry Gilliam, of course, did Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Great film. That's probably what you know his work from the most. All swooping and screeching and diving around the car. This is Brazil. It's a huge box set. Comes with the soundtrack, a few photos, and of course, the film itself on widescreen, high-quality CAV Laserdisc. Uh, I'm yet to watch this, so I haven't seen Brazil. The reason I got it is because it was recommended to me by a friend as one of the best movies of all time. Not just one of the best movies of the 80s, so I'm looking forward to watching this. I will probably do a review on it shortly, so stay tuned. Number 14, Brazil. Okay, The Thing. Has anybody heard of this movie? I haven't seen it. Ah, just kidding. Uh, Kurt Russell. Oh, jeez. The cast in this movie. By the way, this movie has about eight people in it total, and... It's got a small male cast because John Carpenter is trying to build this paranoia aspect to the whole film. And it comes off on film perfectly. You have the most paranoid setting all the way up in Antarctica. And you have seven or eight guys that are just like 
pointing who done it is it you is it you who's the thing right and i don't want to spoil it or anything but if you haven't seen this movie it's amazing it's not just one of the best movies of the 1980s it's one of the best movies of all time I love it. Not just the best horror movie of all time, but one of the best movies, period, of all time. And of course, I do have this on Laserdisc, and check it out. Autographed by yours truly, John Carpenter. Uh, John Carpenter is probably my favorite filmmaker of all time. Halloween, Escape from New York, Assault on Precinct 13, just to name a few. Legendary John Carpenter. If you haven't seen The Thing, see The Thing. Number 13 on Rolling Stone's top movies of the 80s. Number 12, Come and See. I haven't seen this, 1985. Uh, come and see. Maybe I should go and see this movie. I haven't seen it, so. Um, hmm. Yep, I'll have to check this out. I haven't seen Come and See, but that's number 12. Sex, Lies, and Videotape. I've seen this movie one time a long time ago, and I can't really comment on it. I don't remember much about it. Number 10, a little movie called Raiders of the Lost Ark starring Harrison Ford. This is a classic film. And you're going to see a couple 80s movies starring Harrison Ford in this list. But Raiders of the Lost Ark, George Lucas's brainchild. Again, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, great friends. I own this movie on several different formats, but Laserdisc, mwah. Great way to watch this movie. And George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, two of the best filmmakers of all time, for reasons I don't even need to explain. If you haven't seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, you gotta see this movie. Wow, 1981? So, what this looks like on a timeline is... George Lucas does the original Star Wars, and in the middle of making Empire Strikes Back, he starts working on Raiders of the Lost Ark, which he co-wrote with Steven Spielberg, and it shows. It's an amazing film. It's epic. It's an adventure. You gotta see it. Raiders of the Lost Ark is number 10 on Rolling Stone's top movies of the 80s. Let's keep it going. The Thin Blue Line. Um, obviously this movie, the line is so thin, I've never seen it. So, I've never seen The Thin Blue Line. I might see it soon, I might not, I'm not sure. Again, it's like Paris, Texas, right? What is this movie? Number nine? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like E.T. should be number nine. Now moving to number eight, Stranger Than Paradise. Another movie I haven't seen, so I really can't comment, so we'll keep it going. Number seven, and I promised you we'd see more Harrison Ford on this list. This is called Blade Runner, and I saw this movie for the first time probably about eight or nine months ago. And the first time I saw it was actually on RCA CED video disc, and I have the disc right here. Boom. If you don't know what this format is, it's basically video on vinyl. So it's not this huge epic widescreen 5.1 surround sound epic. I watched it on CED, which means it was on a very small screen because it's only 4.3. But this movie is epic. You need to watch this movie on widescreen. Also, I'm not going to get into it too fully, but there are so many different versions of this movie. There's the director's cut, there's the European cut, there's the work print copy, <laughs> and then there's this copy too, uh, one of which, well this one actually I think it is, Harrison Ford does this monologue where he just sounds very unexcited, and as this movie continued to be released on home video formats, he liked it less and less. He was never impressed, and when I say he, I mean Harrison Ford, was never impressed with this monologue and the script where he spoke and kind of told the story in a noir type of way. He never really liked it, so they made future copies of the film, the director's cut, without it for Harrison's sake. Either way, I mean, I prefer having his little monologue in here. I know it's cheesy. Not to say that this movie shouldn't be taken seriously, but I think it serves the plot well to have that monologue in it. Anyways, number seven is Blade Runner. Number six, sure, I've never seen Shaw. Number five, Ran. Something I hate to do, um, I guess it's run in the past tense, I haven't seen Ran, so. Let's see, Blue Velvet, nope, haven't seen it. Number three, Raging Bull, I saw this movie one time a long time ago. This is starring Robert De Niro, excellent movie, uh, boxing movie, one of the best of all time, check it out. Number two is Videodrome. Now, I've never seen Videodrome, however, I have the excellent Criterion Blu-ray that I hear the transfer is beautiful. 
I'll have to check this out. I believe this is David Cronenberg. So we're going to have to check this out soon. Stay tuned for a review in the future. So this is number two on the top 100 movies of the 1980s by Rolling Stone. Ooh. Number one is Do the Right Thing. And I have this on digital. Uh, this is Spike Lee channeling his real life racial urban storyline. And he is so good at being so down to earth. You should watch all of his films because Spike Lee has a voice and he always has a great story to tell. He's a great writer. He knows people. I feel like Spike Lee is very much an everyman. I feel like I can relate to him and that's why I like his films. And so when they put him top 10 on the list, I can see it. I just don't see it as number one. Now Do the Right Thing is an amazing movie, but number one, eh, I would tend to disagree. Now, that's the list, um, and here he is right here. That's the list, and that's the top 25. I showed you what I know about the top 25. If you want to check it out for yourself, I will leave a link down below in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you saw, check out more of my videos. If you want to talk about your favorite movies, feel free to comment below. Did I miss something? Did you see some of the movies on the top 25? Maybe I just missed these movies. Should I watch these movies? Have you seen it? Do you suggest any other 80s movies that weren't on the top 100 or top 25 list? Let me know down in the comments below. Anyways, thanks for watching you guys. I hope you continue to watch and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel because I do put a lot of work into it. And so even just getting one view is amazing to me. So thank you for watching. I love you so much. It's greatly appreciated. I've said my piece. Now let's hear yours.